So what is delirium actually? Why we are talking about this term delirium? Why we need to uh, even think about it? Uh, delirium, as all of us know, is an acute and a temporary change as compared to uh, dementia, which is more of a permanent and a slow growing change which happens upon uh, the brain of a person. So delirium has fluctuating uh, a course of disturbance in, in a person's attention, their awareness of their environment, and the cognition of their environment. So these three main areas are the areas which are affected in patients with, the, uh, with, with this uh, uh, cognition disorder, which is known as uh, delirium. We have seen that about 32% of patients develop delirium in the ICU. And this goes up to a, a whopping number of 50 to 80 percent in those of the ICU patients who are ventilated. So those patients who are on the ventilator are the ones who get the delirium all the more because, you know, uh, the amount of sedative drugs which we use in these kind of patients uh, definitely increases as compared to the ones who are not ventilated. So what happens in uh, delirium, there is fluctuating mental status, there, there is acute mental status change, there is inattention, you may be telling n number of things to the patient, you may be asking uh, them anything, you'll find that they're getting confused, they're not answering you inappropriately, there is psychomotor disturbance, there can be acute disturbance in cognition, which means that they might uh, even uh, stop recognizing their own relatives or they might be knowing you from uh, before, maybe you are their follow-up doctor, and one day they suddenly stop recognizing you. Also, disorganized thinking is, is a part of the delirium, in addition to all the other uh, affections which we just spoke about. There are a lot of risk factors and precipitating factors which can lead to the emergence of uh, delirium in our ICU patients. Amongst these, the pre-morbid factors which are present there in our patients, which could be modifiable or non-modifiable risk factors are many. So some of the non-modifiable risk factors are already present in our patients, which could be advanced age. Of course, we cannot change uh, the age of the patient. The higher the age, our patient is more prone to getting uh, delirious in the ICU. If they have a history of dementia in the past, they have forgetfulness and uh, difficulty remembering names and uh, everything. They have uh, uh, the, the age, uh, the higher age onset dementia already set in. On top of this dementia, they can get acutely confused and the level of confusion will increase leading on to uh, super added delirium on dementia. Low educational level has also been seen to be a risk factor. In addition, high comorbidity burden, which means multi-organ involvement. For example, a patient having diabetes, a patient having vessel involvement due to the presence of uh, uh, higher years of diabetes, patient having coronary artery disease, patients with renal failure, CKD, uh, CLD, or any kind of chronic respiratory failure, for example, interstitial lung disease leading on to hypoxia could be the harbingers of delirium setting in very early in the ICU. Also, frailty has been seen to be uh, correlating well with the, uh, with the presence of delirium because once a person gets frail, our elderly people, they don't move about in their house. They are restricted to one place. And that is a big, big risk factor in getting our patients better and getting them, them out of the, the acute illness which has set in and also a risk factor of delirium on the other hand. Visually impaired and hearing impairment is another risk factor which could be a deterrent to uh, your patient getting better because they have delirium. They can't hear anything. They can't see anything. They're confused where they are. So that is a heartbringer of delirium also. Depression, alcohol abuse, poor nutrition, illicit drug use, opioid, benzodiazepine use, which may be due to chronic pain, especially in our patients who are the ones who have certain kind of oncological problem wherein they are using these medications on a regular basis could be another problem. Also, a history of delirium in the past could be another risk factor which can be important to your patient and needs due attention. Factors relating to present illness, which is present currently, 
which have been seen to be high risk factors include surgical stress, post-surgical patients, cardiovascular surgery, major abdominal surgery, aortic surgery, major joint surgery, and emergency surgery. All these are uh, seen to be having correlating with increased presence of delirium. Also, the severity of illness. We have seen that patients who are more hypoxemic, patients who have hemodynamic instability, those who have ARDS and multi-organ failure who are more sick are more prone to developing uh, delirium, either in the ICU or later the cognitive problems which become a problem, especially with the post-ICU care syndrome. Unexplained, uh, unplanned admission, sorry, which is another risk factor for, uh, you know, acutely getting you out of your house. Your own known environment could be another risk factor. Medical admission, sepsis per se, acute infections, dehydration, electrolyte dysfunction, AKI, liver dysfunction, alcohol, seizures, heart failure. These are all risk factors which could be in the form of the present illness with which your patient has uh, uh, come to the the ICU. Failure of non-invasive ventilation and ventilation longer than four days, which is 96 hours, is another risk factors which could be there. Post-admission factors could be pain. Very, very important. If patient is in pain, they are more prone to developing uh, delirium. Setting in of infection, especially post-operatively, invasive devices, immobility, metabolic abnormalities, prolonged ileus, blood transfusions, all hospital and post-operative factors, which include use of opioids, which is excessive use, if I may use the term, in uh, place of uh, the opioids, which are used for adequate pain control, because you will see the adequate pain control is also important for uh, prevention of the development of delirium. Polypharmacy, again, very, very common with elderly age group. This is the age group wherein your prescription should be the shortest possible because polypharmacy leads to a lot of drug interactions, a lot of confusion amongst this population, which can lead to setting in of delirium. Sleep deprivation, very, very common and very, very important cause in our ICU patients. Their, their circadian rhythm is changed. Sometimes during the night, they are more sicker. They need more attention. They need to be woken up for giving certain medications or giving certain procedures or maneuvers, which are helpful for them to get better. Hence, they have the circadian rhythm difference. They sleep during the night. And, uh, uh, and are woken up uh, during the night time. Hence, there could be sleep deprivation also, which can lead to uh, delirium. Day-night disorientation or confusion, lack of communication with family, deep sedation, invasive devices, physical restraints, poor sleep, opioids, psychoactive drugs, benzodiazepines, anticholinergic agents, immobility and risk of falls can also lead to confusion in the elderly, especially. Longer duration of ventilation, infusions, physical restraints, again correlating with the fact that your patient might be more, more, more and more sick. These are some of the factors which could be responsible for precipitating uh, the, the acute confusional state, which is the delirium. Now we come on to the evaluation of delirium. How do we recognize uh, delirium? It has been seen that if you, if you miss on delirium, your patients are going to have a worse mortality. If you're not able to recognize this particular disorder, you may be missing certain uh, very, very subtle signs of increase in the amount of infection, which can very often uh, uh, happen in our patients who are uh, present in the ICU. Your patient might get better initially, and uh, later on, they may be having more kind of problems. Initially, they responded to your medication. Later, they had uh, a secondary bacterial infection on top of a viral infection setting in. And they have this acute change in their blood pressure, their hemodynamics, or the level of hypoxia they had. So this could be the one wherein they can be prone to development of delirium in addition to their medical condition. So you need to be very, very vigilant in recognizing uh, this problem, because if you don't recognize this problem, the presence of delirium and the onset of delirium is associated with higher mortality in your patients. 
So two tools have been recommended to recognize uh, the presence of delirium in the ICU patients. One of them is ICU CAM, which is the confusion assessment method for ICU scale. The other one has been uh, termed as the intensive care delirium screening checklist. If you compare these two scales, uh, both of them are very, very sensitive to pick up your patients of delirium. However, it has been seen that ICU CAM is the one which is more specific when a head-to-head -head comparison happened between uh, these two scales when we did them on our ICU patients. So uh, since uh, ICDSC is less specific, more often we tend to use ICU CAM which is also recommended in the guidelines. So you should be keeping an ICU uh, CAM scale in your ICU to refer to uh, every day so that on each bed, you're checking these factors on your patients. A prospective study comparing CAM ICU and ICDSC found that CAM ICU was more accurately uh, diagnosing delirium. So this was proven in a study. So if we come to different levels and different uh, types of uh, uh, ICU scales for description of uh, delirium assessment tools, these are the few ones uh, which, we, which we see. However, if you see uh, the, the ones which are lower in the list, we do not use them much, but for your own knowledge, you can uh, actually read about them and remember about them. But ICU CAM and ICDSC are the ones which we use in our ICUs. So if you go to the ICU CAM scoring, what is ICU CAM scoring? The items which you use in ICU CAM scoring is the acute onset or fluctuant mental status which happens in a patient. Is the patient different than his her baseline which was there yesterday or which you have encountered at a previous meeting with your uh, uh, with your patient or has the patient had any fluctuation in the mental status in the past 24 hours as evidenced by the fluctuation on a sedation level or consciousness scale which is the ras or the gcs scale or previous delirium assessment which you did yesterday so if it is absent, you mark it as zero. If it is present, you mark it as one. The second one is inattention, which we uh, measure by saying to the patient, I'm going to read you a series of 10 letters. Whenever you hear the letter A, indicate by squeezing my hand. So read the letters from the following letter list in a normal tone, three seconds apart, which is S-A-V-E. A H A R R T. So errors are encountered when the patient feels uh, fails to squeeze on the letter A, and when the patient squeezes on any letter other than A. So if it is absent, or if the patient has correctly picked up all the letters, then uh, we mark it as more than eight. One is for inattention, which is correct uh, four to seven out of eight, and two for severe inattention, which is only zero to three have been picked up or the number of times uh, the patient squeezed your hand was zero to three only. How do you check the altered level of consciousness? The uh, present It is present if the actual RAS score is anything other than alert and calm, which is zero. So RAS zero means absent, one for altered level, which means RAS one, two for severe uh, altered level, which is RAS more than uh, one. Disorganized thinking, you have to answer yes or no to the following question. Will a stone float on water? Are these fish in the sea? Does one pound weigh more than two pounds? So there are a few questions which you ask your patient. Then if all the four are correct, you mark them as absent. Uh, if they get a score of one, it is disorganized thinking. And for severe disorganized thinking, they will only tell you zero to one correct answers out of these questions. So no need to mug these up. You need to keep this printout um, handy within your uh, ICU or just put it on, on the notice board there for you to refer, uh, refer it uh, daily and ask your patient.